Hello there DCS pilots, warm welcome to return the subscribers. Today we're in the back end of September 2022 and a news update, yet another module has been announced, the G91 Romeo. This one coming from a new developer this time, we're seeing it on screen there, the G91 Romeo. In fact, got a few uh, pictures here to look at of it. This one in being developed here is an actual photo of the aircraft itself. If we take a little look on the bump of it here, it says the G91 is an Italian jet fighter of the Cold War era that was designed and optimized for strike and reconnaissance missions. The G91 originated from the 1953 NATO competition that saw a lightweight strike fighter to be adapted as standard equipment across the air forces of the various member nations. The G91 was declared the winner of the competition in 1958. And I'll go through some of the pictures there as I'm reading this. And was adopted by the Italian Air Force in 61 and the West German Luftwaffe in the following year. It was also evaluated by the US Air Force and it was adopted by the Portuguese Air Forces. It saw extensive service during the Portuguese colonial war in Angolia and Mozambique. India Fox uh, Echo Visual Simulation is developing a full fidelity module in four different versions or variants if you like and i'll just go through those quickly here we see one of the cockpits the r18 which is the italian version that's specifically got four 12.7 mil browning machine guns and two hard points we also got the r3 german version that's got two 30 mil defa cannons and four underwing hard points the r4 version which is the portuguese which is a hybrid between the 18 and the r3 and then we've got the pan aerobatic version converted from the alpha variant uh, for the Fricky Tricolori aerobatic team. I'm sure I butchered that one. I guess that's the uh, French aerobatics, but do correct me on that. I don't actually know. But there we go. No word as of yet on when this module is going to be released. Um, there's a couple more there. We see uh, clearly we got a working flight model with some weapons and I can only assume that they've been doing some weapons testing. Uh, uh, so exciting stuff there. Next thing, no surprise at all. We are, of course, talking with Eagle Dynamics post-2020, which is there is almost always a sale on. And we've got a flash sale announced here. Got a screenshot there of the sale, as well as a little cover there. Um, just some quick news uh, regarding the sale for those who... Uh, maybe haven't seen this yet and want to take advantage. Many modules are 50% off, but as always, some of the newer ones are either not included in the sale or have a smaller discount. I'm going to run through some of the newer ones with the 30% discount. And you can see there, of course, we do got the A10 tank killer uh, in, in that news. Uh, sorry, in that discount. We've also got the F-16 Viper, the F-18 Hornet, the Jeff 17 Thunder, the Mosquito, the uh, twin engine World War II one there, the Mi-24 Hind, the helicopter, the Super Carrier and the DCS channel map. The F-14 Tomcat is on a 25% discount. Um, there are a bunch of campaigns as well that are a third off and the other maps excluding the South, uh, uh, the South Atlantic, the uh, Falkland Islands there, all the others, though, do got 50% off, including Nevada, Normandy, Persian Gulf, and Syria. No word on the Normandy maps or, or again, the, the latest uh, South Atlantic one there. And I uh, want to keep this thing going on the roundup. There have been a whole bunch of updates announced. Uh, sorry. There have been a whole bunch of new modules announced lately and a whole bunch of new maps. Now... I get it, it's an exciting time, but this also slightly concerns me because one of the things that I see endlessly people talking about on DCS is, you know, they're frustrated the way the missiles in multiplayer, the, some of the existing issues. And every time there's a new module that comes along, not only does it tend to break stuff or not work very well because, well, hey, it's brand new, it's early access. But often these modules bring something new along to the game that didn't exist before at all. And often this new technology, if you like, then ends up breaking the game in some other unforeseen way that then takes a little while to fix. And oftentimes they'll fix something over here 
and break something else over there. And so I'm fully on board with the people um, that say, yes, it's always nice to see new stuff coming along. Yes, we understand it's a business and they only make money by selling new things, but also nice to get older stuff done. And if we take a, just a little look here, we've got some of the new stuff coming along. Tornado, that to me looks very, very early uh, uh, work there. We do see, obviously, the models looking fairly good, but of course, there's no textures or anything there. So I'm guessing they're in very early days. We've got the K-Fire here, the uh, jet used in Israeli. This one got very high top speed. Uh, so this may be something that's up there with the Mirage and the F-15. We'll have to see. Of course, the A1 Hotel Sky Raider variant, uh, World War II here. Be really nice to see this off a World War II carrier plane. We'll have to see. And of course, the big game changer is the C-130. The first time that we've got a non combat aircraft if you like i mean you could argue where well, it's used in combat zones and it's got countermeasures but i think we know what we mean air to air refueling guys sounds exciting there i'm aware that's not this week's news but what is interesting about this you know i like to dabble a bit in the airline this they said that this would have a working fmc and there we go look at that that is your classical fmc that would look right at home inside a boeing 737 cockpit there be interesting to see how well they model that of course the closest thing that we've got to this at the minute is in the A10C and Mark II variants. We've got the Super Sabre. This being the first big time supersonic fighter. Of course, we've got the Sabre. And I really like flying the Sabre. The Sabre is one of the aircraft that not only has been with DCS a long time, but I feel it's not gone on other fly-by-wire stuff. But I also feel it's one of the more realistic ones. I've never flown a Sabre, so I couldn't say that for sure. But those of you that do own the Sabre and maybe own a few modules, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Just the way it feels, the way it flies, it, it's really nice. Uh, so really looking forward to the Super Sabre. Be interesting, looks like they do got the refueling pod on there. And of course, that was one of the big additions to the Super Sabre as well as the Afterburner. So looking forward to that. And of course, the uh, a bit of a radar. The Fleur stuff is still on coming and that's going to lead me to, we'll skip some of these a little quicker. Of course, the B-52, one of the... Uh, one of the AI aircraft that they're working on improving. Just look at the detail on that. Absolutely insane. Sometimes I just think, yes, it's very nice that we've got these very highly detailed modules coming along. And of course, great to see. Would also be nice to have an intermediate quality one uh, because we've got a lot of very old modules. But I guess they would rather go slow and get it done properly than do a whole bunch of them at half the resolution. I just hope that once all the AI stuff is up to full res, that the typical computer of the day can handle it. And as we come over, one of the other big things was all the maps that have been announced. Now, guys, I'm going to make a point here of saying that, again, a lot of these people making these third-party developers are new to the game. They've not been here before. And I'm going to say it, the South Atlantic, the Falklands one, the South America one was, as far as maps go, in my opinion, the worst one yet. Now, I get it. Early access, you may still say, well, they aren't a chance and things still to come and all the rest of it. But guys, it was an absolutely massive map. There isn't one tree to be seen on the Falkland Islands. And the rest of it is, frankly, looks to me like somebody's wrapped a sat photo around a terrain height map. And the few models that there are on those islands and, and South America are repeated again and again and again. Now, I get it. You've got to repeat models up to a certain point. And just saying that this is the first time that we've had a map out that, in my opinion, has been a massive step backwards. You look at the Syria map, what an upgrade that was. Even the PG map, in my opinion, is better than this uh, South Atlantic one. And the thing is, it's been out for a few months now. There have been one or two minor updates to it, but really, come on, guys. Let's hope this isn't a sign of, oh, we're going to spam out a load of maps um, because they're just not going to be that great. If the last one's anything to go by, there, I've said it. Of course, things are going to be a bit... We've got the World War II Marianas. Now, this... Uh, <laughs> the thing is, guys, Marianas, come on, let's be honest. How many times do you look on the multiplayer servers and see anything going on on the Marianas where there's any number of people there at all? And I'm going to say, if you were to go online now, you'd be lucky to find one server that's got more than three or four people playing on the Marianas map. And 
I just, I get it. The decision to make a World War II version has been in the pipeline for a long time by Eagle Dynamics. I'm just fearing that this may possibly be one of the pointless maps. Because if the one that's free already isn't getting used very much, what chance has a map got where you got to pay for it? Um, again, just my opinion. We've got Sinai here, or Sinai. I actually had to look up how to pronounce that. Looks like Sinai, but it's actually pronounced something like Sinai. And so there we go, Sinai. Um, one of the ones I do want to talk about here, the Kola Peninsula, and why this is a little bit different to maybe some of the other maps is the people behind this, and give it away bit down there in the lower right, is Orbix. Now, Orbix, for those that maybe don't dabble in the other flight sims, is a big time company that is well known for making scenery across X-Plane, Microsoft Flight Simulator, and, uh, and and some more as well, I think. I think they may have even dabbled in, uh, oh, the name escapes me now, the, 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 oh, I should know this. In any case, these guys are behind a whole bunch of scenery packages. And so if some of the others that are coming out are a little bit naff, expect this map here to be a cut above the rest again these guys bringing a lot of experience to the table and that's going to wrap it up for this one after we get to the change log we had a big bunch of changes drop the other day on dcs 21st of september this is a couple of days ago as i'm making this and we can see here by this change list it is another massive one look at all those changes that have been dropped in there um Hopefully, most of these things are fixes and improvements. And of course, what they never add onto the changelog is all the new things that they've broken since the changes. And so let's hope that the endless list of improvements here is offset by a much smaller, shorter list of all the new things that have been broken. DCS is, after all, a game that we all love. And until next time, guys, that's going to be it from me. Wherever in the world you may be, take care and bye-bye.